welcome back to our channel. My name is Terrell. And my name is Brendan. And we're on BNT Reacts. And today we are checking out LGBTQ plus and homophobia in the K-pop industry, colon, a video essay. And this is part two for us. Yes. And, and, go ahead. Sorry. And it's by Katarina Rowe. <laughs> yes, y'all. This is part two to this video. Finally, um, we did part one a few days ago. Um, we really wanted to split it up because it was so much um, in the video that it was like, we just wanted to split it up and really highlight the video. So we just put it, we put it in the two videos because it was a lot already that we learned so far. Um, yeah. and a lot, it was just a lot of information, um, and a lot of things that, um, and a lot of perspectives, especially from, uh, Katarina that we did not, um, yes. even think about, like, during our first part, so, um, yeah, it's, so it's, be... a, it's a very, it's a very heavy topic, and I think explaining yeah. it up is easier to, like, get everything, because like you said, it's also a lot of information for us, so it's easier to mm -hmm. get the information. Yeah, you know, we really um also I, I've seen a lot of y'all comments. Um so shout out to y'all for commenting and you know, um giving us a little bit more information and um educating us a little bit more on this subject. Cause we clearly don't know a lot of things in terms of this. Um I saw a lot of y'all commenting, especially about like the um the male idols being fetishized by like the um little girls. Oh like the yeah, the Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I saw a lot of comments like that uh, about that situation. So, um, yeah, keep them coming with this part two. But I'm um, excited to check it out and get more into this. So let's just get right into it. Let's go. Oh. oh, okay. What is the male gaze? Well, theconversation.com defines it as this. The male gaze invokes the sexual politics of the gaze and suggests a sexualized way of looking that empowers men and objectifies women. In the male gaze, women are visually positioned as an object of heterosexual male desire. Her feelings, thoughts, and her own sexual drives are less important than her being framed by male desire. We see examples of this everywhere in modern media where women are sexualized to hell and back. Mm. And it's something important to look at in reference to how K-pop groups are marketed. Now, I do apologize that most of this conversation has been focused on the binary and hasn't mentioned the non-binary a lot. Well, simply put, it's hard to talk about non-binary when it comes to K-pop because the idol groups are based on a binary system. Boy groups and girl groups with a handful of co-ed groups rarely tossed in. So, I do apologize to yeah, all it's my not a lot of co-ed groups compared to like the boy And I love you very much. Yeah. Don't think that I ignored you for this conversation, please. But the K-pop market is mainly focused on boy groups and girl groups, and these two are marketed in very different ways. Girl groups having a much larger fan base of males than one might originally think. And you can see this is how some of the groups are marketed. Now, you might say that these are just stylistic choices and stop looking so much into it, but that's just it. These are choices, and no choice, especially in the music industry, is made without thinking about its implications. We're going to talk about the difference in how boy groups and girl groups are marketed right after we define the female gaze, mm -hmm. because this is all actually important when understanding the fetishization of LGBTQ plus people. Well, what is the female gaze? It is, simply put, the ways in which women and girls look at other females, at males, and at things in the world. This concerns the kinds of looking involved and how these may be related to identification, objectification, subjectivity and the performance and construction of gender. It is, is less sexual point. in nature and focuses more on the emotional side of the character or person presented. So how does this affect K-pop and more so, how does it affect LGBTQ plus people? Well, it's a long and complex topic that could, in theory, have its own separate video. But simply put, girl groups are often more pressured to look a certain way, get a certain surgery, or lose excessive amounts of weight to fit the male standard of beauty. Now, male idols go through this too, 100%, don't get me wrong, but it happens a lot more to females in and outside of Korea. You'll also hear men be more comfortable talking about their struggles with it. Now, it takes a lot of courage for these men to come forward with this information, but it just seems to be more out in the open for men because they have a much larger more empathetic female fan base. Like, for example, I personally see more men discussing their diets or workouts that they had for a specific comeback because men are equally pressured by the male gaze as well to be muscular or well-built, but I rarely see women so open with it. Women's weight loss is supposed to be hidden behind a curtain. Their mm -hmm. insecurities shouldn't be focused on because it defies the male gaze. The male gaze, in theory, strips the woman of everything that makes her her. She's a vessel to look at and hardly nothing more. She shouldn't complain, shouldn't have loud opinions, and should just Sit there in a short skirt and a crop top and shut up. I even read this article where this new group of men in Korea have these high standards of their girlfriends to look like female idols, even going so far as to starve them or make them get plastic surgery. Uh, now, like I said, men are equally sexualized by fans a lot as well. And I mean, let's not do that. So yeah, let's talk about that and specifically what it means for LGBT men. 
Okay, now this is the yeah, what we kind of talked about. Discussed. Turn. Both men and women are sexualized. My non-binary friends can be as well, by the way. But what's the difference between the sexualization of gay, bi, male, love, male men versus lesbian, bi, or women, love, women, women? Well, the Lamron puts it well and says this. The primary culprit of this over-sexualization of gay male relationships is often the straight cis female. It isn't hard to guess the cause of this toxic attachment style either. Men are inherently threatening. They often have physical and social power over women. Women are therefore attracted to less threatening men or men whom they feel have less power over them. The gay man poses less of a threat to women and therefore suits the female gaze. He's not intimidating or a figure to be nervous around. Thus, fan bases are constructed by individuals who don't feel threatened by these gay men. The sexualization of man loves man relationships stems from the presupposition that gay men are not a threat to straight cis women and therefore can be used as a lens through which cis straight women may explore their own own sexual desires without the threat of a straight man or vulnerable woman in the fantasy. So to make it clear, the sexualization of gay men is still sexual. There's often this misconception that BL dramas or fan fictions are more focused on the emotional side, so they aren't as damaging as women love His women fiction son. when fetishized, but that's simply not true. While it is true that gay fiction between two men written by women can on average be more focused on the emotional aspects of the relationship than its female counterpart, it is still sexual as hell. It's the perfect definition of female versus male gaze. The female fanfiction writers and overly sexual shippers are still focused on the sexual aspect of it, they just put a more emotional connection in it. And they do this so they don't have to fear writing a toxic male character who treats a woman badly or writing a female character who is utterly dependent on the male. Gay men are real people who have regular relationships. Mm -hmm. Not every gay relationship is going to have the stereotypical feminine male and masculine Jeez. male. That's imposing Sorry. gender norms on something that shouldn't happen. It's something facts. that is taken and fetishized by an uninvolved party and it's gross. Thanks. Now, there's this misconception that women love women relationships are more accepted by society than male love male relationships, mm -hmm. and that's simply not true. If anything, it might be closer to the opposite, although neither is truly accepted in the areas we are discussing. Feminine lesbian relationships are more accepted by men because of one, sexual fantasies, and two, this idea that, oh, it's just a phase for her, or she's never had a good enough man in bed, which, honest to God, makes me want to vomit. I yeah, don't that's think crazy. I well, people say that as well. I hate, most I hate this song right now. This as a large percentage I'm sorry, of the are female themselves. The sexualization of women love women is so blatantly obvious in film, television, and other forms of media, and it stems from this idea that women are helpless creatures who can't decide for themselves, so they must be led down the path of straightness. Or the idea that women are only with each other for men's pleasure. That is the inherent privilege that men have. Bringing it back to K-pop, we can see this from time to time in music videos where women are cuddled up with each other, hugging in a more romantic manner, or just straight up almost kissing or actually kissing. There's not as much of a big fuss made about two women being close because it buys into the male gaze and the male fantasy. Let me make this final thing clear for everyone. Women are not with other women to garner male attention. Right. Women are not with women because they have yet to have a good D. Women are with women because hey, they you are speaking women. fast. It's as simple as yeah, that. Like... And a lesbian couple shouldn't have to fear walking down the street holding hands because they might get catcalled or run up on. Now, we've discussed a lot about LGBTQ plus community, but we have yet to hit the T in that acronym. So, mm -hmm. let's discuss that. All right. Now, this section is probably going to be a little bit shorter because there's not a lot of representation for transgender people in the K-pop community. There are three specific instances of either a trans idol or a group that I'll be talking about, but there could be more less known ones that I'm unfamiliar with. Either way, this issue deserves to be talked about more. The first person we'll be talking about is Harasu, whose name I probably just butchered, so I'm sorry about that. Her Wikipedia page states that Harasu is a Korean pop singer, model, and actress. Assigned male at birth, Harasu identified as female from early childhood and underwent sex reassignment surgery in the 1990s. She is the Republic of Korea's first transgender entertainer and in 2002 became the second person in Korea to legally change their gender. As the Republic of Korea's first transgender entertainer, there was a great deal of media interest in Harasu. That's and she wild. Was Second described person? as being more beautiful than a woman. As of 2008, Harasu believed that she still faced discrimination within the entertainment industry, saying on television, many people pretend to smile and welcome me, but after the filming, they'd scold me behind my back. Her father in particular had great difficulty accepting his child as a daughter, but her family have since accepted this and show great pride in her career. Harasu has been given credit for raising social awareness of transgender people in the Republic of Korea and has said in interviews that she hopes to become a role model for other trans people. Another instance of 
trans representation in K-pop is the all-trans group called Lady. As stated by otakucart.com, the K-pop group was inspired by Harasu, South Korea's transgender singer, although the group received hate since sex reassignment surgery was illegal in 2005. Moreover, people looked down on them, which quickly turned into a controversy. As the group came out in 2005, the people of Korea were still adapting to Western culture, hence welcoming an all-transgender K-pop group was too much for them. However, after that, another controversy broke. The group started getting bad publicity and they became more visible in the eyes of the media and the public. A photo book called Women Reflect was released to bring the group more attention. The book contained nude pictures of all the members, which outraged the public more. This was super controversial in the nation 15 years ago, and they did sadly disband after two years. And our last instance of representation is the girl group Mercury, who had one trans member, Hanbit. There isn't much about them, sadly. They debuted in 2016, and while no disbandment has been confirmed, it's believed that they disbanded that same year. The only thing I can really give you from this is a quote from Hanbit herself, where she says, quote, living with the female body itself brought me the greatest feeling of euphoria, but also that she has a fond memory of living the past before the operation. These are the three most famous instances of trans idols in K-pop, so it is definitely a topic that deserves to be looked at into separately and on its own time. There's a serious lack of representation for young trans Korean kids, and most of these ladies I mentioned have seemingly fallen off the map from mainstream media, but I hope they're all doing well wherever they are now. Oh, oh. Me. <laughs> now, I want to make it clear that I'm not here to stir up drama. If these idols apologize for these actions, then fine. But some of the things I'll be discussing are honestly disgusting. I'm not here with an opinion because I barely even know these idols. And I also don't claim that these are all the homophobic idols in the industry. These are just a couple, and I'm only here to state the facts that were presented to me. Number one, Zyko. He was a member of the boy group Block B, and in his song Tough Cookie, he used the F slur multiple times. I'm not gonna say it, I assume most of you know what it is. Now, I'm not crazy familiar with Zyko, nor even Block B that much, so I am completely Block B seen Block B in some um, compilations before. Man, and oh, I'm, yeah, I'm sure, sure we there have, are more yeah. educated, older nah, K-pop remember, fans who are mm -hmm. and can help you. Zyko did issue an apology for this through his company, stating something like this. We were not looking down on homosexuals, a representative of the agency said. This song was used in a musical sense. If we had known exactly that the word has the meaning of looking down on homosexuals, we would not what have a, used what it. What meaning does it have? Any bias or negative feelings towards homosexuals and holds respect for them. We okay. would like to apologize to anyone who felt uncomfortable. However, <sighs> netizens also noticed a confederate flag on the sleeve of his jacket in that music video. What? The flag of the slave states during the American Civil War oh, is a no. symbol of racism Why and is there often even... used by the KKK. So, I don't know if he just really fucked up that day or what was happening there like right. you woke Is up and decided i'm not going to commit one but two hate crimes like not like the confederacy but like other countries before, I'm sure like having much more educated on this man than me or feel free to research this yourself as well I have no idea what this man is up to right now, and I am fine continuing to do that. C1. He is a member of Super Junior and is a devout Christian. Now, I mention this since religion seems to play a large part in his opinion. In an interview, he had stated the following, I will respectfully refuse any such offers. While I respect all genders, I do not wish to acknowledge homosexuals as I've been taught that God created man and woman with specific characteristics and duties. I realize that with globalization, there are many entertainers who do not share my views. There are those who are value-oriented, and there are those who are success-oriented. However, shouldn't an actor deliver on his image to his audience through roles he chooses to portray based on his beliefs in life? One comment from a netizen regarding this situation was, he's quite playful with his members' skinship, but for some reason can't handle a homosexual character. He then proceeded to retweet some particularly homophobic tweets by a politician against gay marriage. C1 later issued an apology. In this statement, he said, I retweeted a source that has another opinion about legalizing gay marriage. However, I belatedly realized that this was not just a matter of court posting a source's opinion after reading many tweets sent to me. My thoughtless tweets hurt a lot of people, and I'm humbled by the fact that I gave pain to a lot of fans, staff, and everyone else. I would like to communicate and learn more in the future. Again, I apologize to everyone I hurt with my retweets, but I think from what I've seen, most people don't give a shit. People were quick to call out the hypocrisy of C1 being willing to do some of the most sexual skinship with his members that I have ever seen to make money off of gay people, but then turn around and not want them to have basic human rights. Right. Again, <laughs> I don't keep up with this man enough to know if he's changed at all, so take everything I say with that in mind. He may be a great person now, I don't know him That's very well. Now there are probably more idols that I could cover nervous. here, but we've been talking about depressing stuff for a while, so I want to talk about some positives. Okay. Uh, okay, positives. Okay. Not allegedly. Don't, don't sue me Disclaimer, again. this is by no means all the idols in the industry who are supportive, so feel free to leave more in the comments below. BTS Yoongi. 
Now, I'm pretty sure all of BTS seem to support LGBTQ plus people, mm -hmm. but Yoongi seems particularly out there with his support, stating, quote, there's oh, nothing well, wrong with being LGBTQ plus, everyone is equal. And pretty much all ARMY know that this man collects lesbians like their keychains. That's a joke, by the way. It's a joke in the community that a lot of Yoongi biases are lesbian. Okay. Don't take that too seriously. Sunmi. Sunmi proudly spoke about identity. While some people thought Sunmi was coming out as part of the LGBT community, Sunmi took to Twitter to explain that, that she supports LGBT but was not part of the community. She was just an ally. And I personally remember in some interview about her recent comeback that she said she was open to feelings or something with a woman. But again, I think that's just from an ally standpoint. Mm -hmm. As she stated herself, she's just a big supporter of LGBTQ plus people. And we don't want to assume sexuality here. That's a big no-no. Shiny Jonghyun. As stated by K-pop stars, Jung Hyun previously changed his profile picture on his Twitter account to a handwritten letter of a transgender student from Sung Kong Hae University. Sorry for butchering that. At the time, there was an Anyang protest, sorry for butchering that, which highlights the discrimination against the LGBTQ plus community in South Korea. It was later revealed by the student Kang Yoon Ha that Jung Hyun had reached out to her to inform her that he would be using the letter as his profile picture and asked if it was alright because he did not want to put unwanted attention onto her. He then went on to say, I support you. As a celebrity, as a minority of a different type in front of the public, I also feel disappointment towards the world that does not accept our differences. Of course, I can't compare that to what you feel. Mamamoo. According to the same website, Mamamoo is a group that has openly supported the LGBTQ yeah, no, we love Mamamoo. Yeah, we love saying that they love and care for people from every race, sexuality, religion, and gender. The group was all seen wearing rainbow mo pins which come from the first ever queer k fandom community proceeds from the pins go to queer projects every year the group was also pictured with harasu the transgender singer that we talked about recently and the second person in south korea to legally change their sex now there are many other groups and idols who seem to be supportive such as but not limited to stray kids ats Blackpink's Rosé, Twice. TXT is commonly joked about by the LGBTQ plus community mm. for being the group for the gays. Mm. So do with that what you will. Mm. And many other idols or groups that I'm sure people will list in the comments. Okay. Now, an idol who I didn't even know about until this video is Holland. And let me just say, I listened to his song Neverland and it was added to my playlist. It's just a nice vibe and I highly recommend people to go support this icon for being himself in the industry. According to CNN.com, this is a bit about him and his story. For context, Holland wanted to debut as himself, as a gay idol. Quote, they said it would be bad for my image, Holland told CNN. To Holland, that was a deal breaker. He had been badly bullied in middle school and it was important to him to be open about his sexuality. Mm -hmm. So he quit the label and debuted as an independent artist. I wanted okay. to prove that I am worthy of love and that I'm worthy of achieving and being accomplished, he said. I felt that this was the only way I could love myself. When he debuted in 2018, he attracted a lot of positive attention overseas, but back home in South Korea, the reaction was muted or even negative. Nevertheless, wow. Holland remained determined to make a statement. While filming the music video for his first single, Neverland, the director told him that there would be a 19 plus rating in South Korea if the clip showed any same-sex affection. So Holland decided to include a scene where he kisses a man to prompt audiences to consider why a same-sex kiss deserved an explicit rating right. when a kiss between a man and a woman wouldn't. He finds it sad when shows make stars kiss each other. Quote, they make it into funny content to embarrass them, Holland said. It's a shame that's the limit they can go to when it comes to showing homosexual interaction. It can only be portrayed as funny. All I gotta say is, send your love and support his way because he seems like a super genuine and nice person from the small bit that I've learned about him over the course of the past few days. Now, there may be a few other LGBTQ plus idols who are open, and I'm sure, once again, that subscribers will leave them in the comments because <laughs> I'd love to support them, but Holland is the most well-known one. So he is who I covered. Now, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to start wrapping up my statements here. Conclusion. Now, we've covered a lot of information, but there's also a lot that we haven't even scratched the surface of. But again, I only have so much time here as I don't think you guys want a feature-length film. Mm -hmm. Homophobia is prevalent in Korea and the K-pop industry, and this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. It's an issue often ignored by the mainstream, but I don't want to do that. It's something that deserves its attention because it hurts real people. These companies present the message of, well, we need you to act gay for profit, but don't actually be gay or we'll most likely fire you. It's a hypocritical and disgusting standpoint, but it's not one that seems like it's changing. I don't think that this will change until the actual country of South Korea does. And as I said at the beginning of the video, it's starting to bit by bit, but 
not nearly fast enough. You can't expect people to sit around and wait to be given permission to love who they want to love or be the gender that they are. When you tell people to wait until the country changes a bit more, you're part of the problem. LGBTQ plus people can't won't and shouldn't have to wait for basic human rights yeah. why does it matter who they love in their private lives why is it anyone's business but their own why does the government feel like they have the right to control that part of people it's simple in the k-pop industry gay people are seen as either a product to sell or a person to be marketed towards much like black people when speaking of cultural appropriation they know that lgbtq plus people make a large percentage of the fan base so they cater to it by profiting off of it all while shaming it or putting it down there are real fans of the industry and real people living in South Korea who are LGBTQ+, and they deserve to have the idols who they can look up to, because, let's be real, there are definitely gay idols. You're an idiot if you think otherwise. It's just basic math. Taking into account how many idols there are, probability-wise, at least one of them has to be gay. And that's something homophobic stands are gonna have to suck up, because it's not their decision, and it's not their life to control. There are many groups or idols who seem to support gay rights, but they unfortunately live in a place where they can't be too loud about it or they'll be ridiculed or fired themselves and that fucking sucks and finally a word to my lgbtq plus viewers i can't express to you how sorry i am to you all that this is the shit that as a fan of the industry you have to deal with i don't know your personal situations but know that my channel is always a safe place for you i hope you are safe and happy and surrounded by people who support you and if no one in your life knows about you then I'll support you. It can be a lot easier to talk to or be open with a stranger on the internet. Mm -hmm. So know that I and many others are in your corner. If you ever need to talk to someone, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or any of my other subscribers who are supportive. I love all of you very much. Mm -hmm. And I am so unbelievably proud of the courage you have to be yourself. Even if you aren't out yet, you are still an incredibly courageous person. I hope the best for all of you. And I hope that one day people can get their heads out of other people's business long enough to support you. Much love to you all. I hope every viewer enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. All right, listen, Katarina was nice about it. Get out of people's ass. Mind your damn business. Go ahead. What do you think? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this was, uh, it was just as good as the other part. Very, very much, very much information. Very much information. Um, a lot of like, like I think the same things like, a lot of stuff that we didn't know, or well, I guess I didn't know, um, especially about like the groups. Cause I feel like a, this was kind of like more about um, like the the gay man thing with like the female like fans and then kind of like um, certain like members or people who were anti LGBTQ or like pro LGBTQ and like all of that um it is just like crazy to see i don't know like especially like i guess how it is now and also i was just thinking back to like the little the section on the trans idols and how that was like so early like and it seems like there was like the whole trans group and like the two trans idols and now they're like completely gone and now it's like i don't know it's like i don't know it's like sad that like now there's not even well there's the one um guy that you mentioned at the end that was out but it's like Holland. yeah uh Holland that um I lost my train of thought oh yeah but like that like now there's like not that representation and um I was also just thinking that like 2005 that was like like just even like in I was thinking like in western culture like that was like very that must have been like very scary and like because even like like I know that now like gay marriage and everything's legal but like stuff like that was like not like, I don't think was widely accepted even here. So it's like, they were like hella courageous. And it's just, it is it is just like sad that there is just this pandering to like, it's like, like she literally said, like act gay, but don't actually be gay. We, we don't want that. No, no, no. So it is, um, it, it is kind of sad, but. The video itself was very well made, very informative, and you have this channel, the her channel as a safe space, and you have our channel as a space, space mm -hmm. safe space. We love you, and you are completely valid. And yeah, don't let anybody like Charles said. Don't let anybody get you down. Don't listen to the haters and mind your business. Um. Yeah. Fuck them. How about that? I ain't gonna be nice about it. Fuck them, motherfucker. <laughs>
<laughs> no, listen, y'all. First of all, happy motherfucking Pride Month, okay? We celebrating Pride all motherfucking year long. Be your motherfucking self, whether you straight, gay, bi, um, trans, um, non-binary, um, asexual, asexual, um, whatever the fuck you want to be, be it. Listen, we love you no matter what. Let me, let me. I'm gonna go off a little bit, okay? First of all. Katarina, amazing job on the video. I love the video. I love the structure of the video. Um, even like the dope transitions in between like the K-pop performances oh, yeah. and like it was the same song with just multiple different performances. It really was really cool. The information was really nice. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the fact that the video it wasn't so heavily um face it, it wasn't so heavily um um a lot of the production wise it wasn't it wasn't what is I'm trying to say it wasn't um so heavily dependent on the, pro the production of the video in terms of like what's going to be on the actual screen versus versus her just giving the information which i really thought was dope yes. um it was nice to hear some of the allies um or the possible allies in the lgbt um for the lgbtq plus community um that are in k-pop like we, we heard mama Moo, we heard all like we heard some people in some groups that we know um so it was nice to hear that um but listen um a lot of facts a lot of facts in this video. Um, a lot of it relating to even um, the culture that we have in the U.S. now. Um, I know the U.S. has come very accepting of um, of queer people, um, but we still got a long motherfucking way to go. And we, there are still places in the U.S. that aren't accepting, as accepting as maybe the place we're at right now. Shit, there are still people yeah. right now who are probably in our state who are not in good situations. I know for a fact, I know a few people who have families who if they are openly themselves there would be backlash there would be it, it, they, it would not be acceptance yeah. and so i'm just very thankful that um I, I thank god honestly for my situation for my upbringing um i had i had to deal with a lot of things a lot of homophobia in my own family but i thank god that i'm um, now i'm being able to openly be myself and uh, i thank god for the change um that he made in my family for those people who felt those things um and he made that change for them for them to be more open and now more accepting of me and i i i Thank God for that. Um, but this is something that people um, struggle with on a daily basis. And it's fucking crazy that you, the world dictates so much that you have to just struggle and fight to be your motherfucking self openly. Yeah. All these people that got most of the problems, all the motherfucking people who say, oh, it's because of religion, it's because of religion. And they want to quote the Bible. And I'm not speaking... I'm kind of mixing the U.S. and Korean culture as well, but really, um, I can only really speak from the U.S. culture, um, and I'm going to speak from, you know, but a lot of people, they're like, oh, because of the Bible, oh, well, because God said this, but if God ain't want me to be queer, God would not have made me queer. If God had a motherfucking problem with me being queer, God would have motherfucking strike me down right now and killed me. God loves you for who the fuck you are. God created you in his image, baby. Fuck what they say. You a hater. Big hater. I'm trying to think what else was in the video. Um about the whole um male gazing thing. Yeah, that's something that's just fucking is weird. Is I don't I don't understand that. Especially I, I've seen that a lot um in this culture as well. Um I've I've had experiences and I not experiences, but I had um I've had family members who've had experiences and friends who had experiences with that. Um, and they tell me about those experiences, especially like the lesbian and I, oh, I can turn you out and this. That oh, shit yeah, is very cool. weird and creepy. I don't, I don't fuck with people who do that at all. Um, yeah, this K-pop industry, just like, um, a lot of the industry that's over here, they, they will profit off of, um, queer people. Um, there's a lot of queer baiting going on in the media right now. Be very cautious of that. Um, and it's just, it's, June is like the month over here in the U.S. where they're like, oh my God, we love you all. And um, yay, you're queer. Yay, we're happy. Yay. And Let's then the fucking pride. July 1st hit and then shit. They won't hear shit until a year later. I'm speaking facts right now because a lot of this shit that we all do deal with and we may not deal with it to the extent of the um some people are dealing with in um korea right now um because that is this is a whole different situation yeah. so my heart really goes out to them shout out to everyone who was able to no matter the backlash um all these idols was able to stand up for themselves and be themselves shout out to everybody who may not um be, may not be able to do that right now or maybe maybe not not may not be able to 
be themselves openly or be an open ally right now. Listen, we're here for you. We love you. And we want you to know that everything will get better. I don't know. I'm, I got a lot going on scrambling my mind right now. It just was such a long video, um, but it was very informative. Um, really, really just, just be cautious um, of what you do and how you move, especially with these idols in terms of like these ships as well. And like how y'all kind of, because it, it uh, shit is so much different in Korea than it is in the US. And I know the US is not the only place that they have um, K-pop fans, but um, still regardless, no matter where you are, be careful in terms of um, how you do those things and how you operate. Um, it's, it's sad, it's, it's, it's really fucking sad. Um, I was shocked to learn that the person came out as transgender in 2005. I mean- Yeah, I, like the yeah, trans, they, like, the trans they, group. Yeah, yeah. And, and they, no, not the group, the- um. The one that transitioned like the nineties yeah, and was like the no. second person. They transitioned in the nineties and I guess they debuted like a few years. Like I'm guessing it was like. I, yeah, I, guess, I'm, I think I'm getting. Yeah, I think I'm. But that's evil. That's that's fucking crazy because I would have never thought that. Um, but yeah. I'm 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 praying for better times. I'm praying for um for things to get better. Um, we just need this world to really. It's fucking crazy. Like. It is crazy. It's crazy to you have to fight to be yourself. Um. It's truly crazy, um, and it's up to everybody collectively to make the effort to be different and to um, make the change, to not be complicit with what's going on right now. Um, did I say that word right? Complying? Complicit? Yeah, complicit. I don't know what complicit means. What does it mean? I don't know, y'all. Listen, y'all know what I'm saying. All jokes aside, y'all know what I'm saying. Um, seriously, um, support these idols, uplift these idols, um, especially Holland. I didn't even... Um, Shout out to Holland for fucking being an independent artist and yeah, not like fucking his... sacrificing his values. Um, that's that's fucking that's dope. That's so dope. Um, it's not. It's it's not. It's crazy to me, but it's not crazy because we dealing with shit now. Fucking little Nas. Um, recently did not get nominated. I don't think he got nominated for any BET BET awards over here in the U.S. And it's fucking crazy because he was one of the number one artists last year. He had Literally. multiple songs and so he ain't getting nominated for and His so, album was like real, it did real well. Yeah, so like it's, it's just crazy. It's crazy the battles that we have to go through just to be ourselves, but this is our message from B and T um, to openly queer people, a queer couple. Um, some of y'all don't think we a couple. I don't know why y'all. I don't know that. But <laughs> <laughs> this is from us to you to be yourself, okay. love yourself. We, we getting inspirational over here for real because this shit is serious. Um, and and you're just touching the hand, so it's official. All right, whatever. Brandon being <laughs> sarcastic. You just grabbed my hand. I don't know what it was. Anyway, we that's... love you and you're valid. Yes. Anyway, have us. Yes. That's all for this reaction. If you like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you also hit that subscribe button. Go to comment down below for more reaction cuts. It can be more videos like this. Anything we will react to it. And uh, make sure to follow us on all of our social medias: Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Follow both of our separate channels and make sure to check out our Patreon. Yes, check out that motherfucking Patreon, y'all. We're gonna be having some special offers coming soon, um, so be on the lookout for that in terms of Patreon. And if you want a safe queer space, you can also join our Discord yes. and talk to anybody. Yes. Use, everybody there's a safe space, so it's very it is it, is very comfortable. We have yes. we have everybody from we have so many different people from all around from different every everyone's just different and we embrace everyone. Yes. Um shout out to Katarina as well again for the amazing video. Um we might gotta check out more content from Katarina because I'm I'm liking sure, sure. it. Yes, but that's all for this reaction y'all. We're out. Bye. Bye. Thank you.